Hunter, good morning. How are you? I'm good, guys. Um, and Hunter is brought to us by Shaw's and Star Market, perfecting the art of fresh. Um, I don't know. Where do we begin with you today, friend? Uh, that was uh, that was frustrating. It was disappointing. Uh, I just want to know from your end, Hunter, how important was the Bills win leading into this? I know you said after the game you guys had kind of a good week of practice, but it's those old mistakes that sort of reared their ugly head once again. What is the level of frustration for you right now at 2-6? and six? Yeah, I think you said it. I mean, I think it's just the same mistakes that we keep making. Um, it's disappointing. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like we're working hard and we've improved in a lot of areas, but just those little mistakes when you play a good football team, man, like – especially on the road and it's just, it's tough to overcome. And um, so we got to be better. So is it, is it usually just one or two plays that you think is giving you the most trouble in this, in games like this? Yeah. When you play good football teams, man, especially good offenses that like can really score, man. And you can't convert in the red zone. Like we, we should have, um, especially those two times, one with a turnover, one with a field goal, um, you know, that hurts and definitely be better in that in that situation um, and putting points on the board. Uh, what was the – I know the, the play that Mac threw the interception on, was that something that worked in practice? Was it something that, that you were seeing? Because I know a certain NFLer that I have access to was like, oh, there was some assuming going on. That seemed like that was one of those that worked in practice. Can you kind of walk us through that play? Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a, a play that we, you know, it's it's a play off a play that we run. Um, so, you know, thinking we could get them there and in a area down in the low red zone. So, and just didn't work, man. Um, timing wasn't there. But everything, execution just wasn't great. And uh, you got to give credit to them, too. I mean, Ramsey made a great play, falling off on the route. Um you know, sometimes you think he might carry it all the way through, and he, he made a great play too. So you got to give him credit as well. So we're talking to Hunter Henry now. Hunter, I know you can't talk about the officials, and you guys won't address it because you can't do anything about it. But let's, like, if you have like a really good friend of yours that was that you played football with at Arkansas, what would your friend say about their officiating? Not you, your friend, your friend, your good friend, not you, but your friend. What would your friend say? Would your friend say, wow, you guys really got screwed with a bunch of no calls? Um, I don't I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to say on that side of things. I think you're trying to get me in trouble, I think. That's, no, that, your that, friend. That you're debating me on that one. It's your friend. It's not you. you have, you're completely safe. It would be your friend who would be talking. I can't take, I can't take the bait on that one, my guy. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, because at the, at the end of the game, and I know Bill kind of mentioned it, talked about it a little bit this morning on the Greg Hill Show, like the frustration at the end of the game on the Devontae Parker. He hits the defensive back after an interception. Miami doesn't like it, even though it was a clean hit. It seemed like there was a – like the frustration was kind of overflowing onto the sideline. Is that something that you guys need to be, I guess, mindful of, is not letting the frustration bleed out into the field? And, how, and then, if that is the case, how do you how do you control it? Yeah, I mean, that's always, a, always the case. Um can't let a bowl over, man. You try to, you know, personally, I know for myself, I try to stay as even keel, as steady as I can, no matter what what's going on in the game. And I think we all got to take that approach. Um, you know, and I mean, that was at the end of the game, just trying to make a play. I mean, it was unfortunate. You never want to see someone down like that. Um, but, it, it, you know, at the end of the day, it is football. It's a bang-bang play. And, you know, that stuff can happen sometimes. And, we just can't let the aftermath of that um, bowl over in anything. So, um, yeah, we just going to stay a little bit more even keel, not let this thing affect us. Hunter Henry with Gresham and Fourier here on WEEI. Uh, there is a report out there that it looks like Kendrick Bourne uh, might be out for the rest of the year, maybe with an ACL. Hunter, whether he's out a few weeks or the rest of the way, what does losing Bourne mean to this offense? Well, I don't. I don't really know what it is yet. So, uh, but I can just speak on Kendrick just himself. I mean, he's a stud. He's a great player. Um, he's big for us. And so, 
I don't I don't really know. Can't speak on what the injury or anything is. Um, but KB, uh, we love KB, and uh, I appreciate and love going to compete with KB every week. So I was just curious after you're talking about, you know, Hunter Henry here talking with Gresham Fourier uh, about being even keel, right, keeping your emotions in check. What what situation, I guess, is is harder, more challenging to stay even keel? Is it dealing with, you know, a, uh, you know, a bunch of losses and a bad record or – uh, staying even keel with a bunch of wins and a, and a good record. Which which situation is tougher to manage? Huh. They're uh, both unique in their own aspect, um, for sure. I think you know losing. I think is is always hard. Um, it's never what you want. Put a lot of work in. Um, so I, I would say maybe losing uh, it can be pretty tough in in a way. Um, just because the amount of work that you put in and everything that you do and you pour out uh, week in on a week out basis. Um, so I think, you know, that side of things, just trying to stay as even as you can, man, just continue to go to work and uh, continue to plug away. Hunter, we know that uh, the season feels like it's at a bit of a crossroads here, and the trade deadline is Tuesday. You're in the final year of your deal here. Do you keep your head on a swivel for a possible address change over the next 36 hours or so? No, I'm not paying attention to anything. Okay, well, uh, let's go to some lighter side of sports. Okay, uh, Halloween's tomorrow. You got you have two little kids. Do I have that correct? I'm not. I don't want to add more than you than yeah. you already have you have two so are you are, are you the dad that rolls around trick-or-treating with the little wagon and the 12 pack of beer in the back and the kids don't get to sit there and you roll around with the other dads or are you hyper focused on making sure your kids get every last bit of candy when they go to the door like which approach do you take uh at this current state right now I'm, I'm i don't have the i don't have the beer in the wagon i think i'll get to that point one day um <laughs> <laughs> but right now, mid season, I, I I stay away from from the twelve packs, and and uh, so I, I'll play, maybe be a little bit more focused on my uh, almost two year old trying to trying to get candy and trying to figure this whole Halloween thing out. So we're still trying to teach them that you got you got to go up there and get the candy and do all that. So it's earn it. a little bit more teaching. How, how does Hunter Henry relax like with kids and you know life? Like how do you how does how does what does Hen, Hunter Henry do to like kind of unwind honestly just being at home with my family like being with my wife um running around with my kids kids but one is just a baby so you know mainly just my son um just spending time with them you know you're you're on the like especially when you're on the road and you're at the facility a lot you're doing a lot of you know, day in, day out basis, like a lot of work. Uh, I think just unwinding right now is, is huge. I'm just being with my family. If your little one got a bag full of candy and dad was indulging, maybe you have a sad, we're two and six, <laughs> I need some candy, what would you be rummaging through the candy bag for? <clears throat> Man, you know what I love is those, those uh, like caramel M&M's. Those things are money. Those like caramel, <laughs> like filling M and M's, and then uh, those the peanut butter M and M's. I'm a big M and M guy. I, lo- I like M and M's, but I like all the different flavors. So, are you an that's almond M and M's? Where uh, I would go? Almond M and M's. Are you down on that? Or are you nah, a no nuts? I'm, I'm I'm out on almond M and M's. I'm I'm regular M and M's. I like the peanut M and M's, peanut butter, and the uh, caramel M and M's. They're awesome. All right, well, now we know what to have in a uh, bowl at the end of the year around uh, holiday time whenever uh, Hunter joins us in studio. Hunter Henry, thanks for the time. We appreciate it. We'll uh, catch you next week. Thank you. Bye, guys.